In today's video, we're going to be diving into the upcoming pattern, taking a look here at a pattern that is evolving a lot. Day after day after day, we're kind of getting a clearer picture of what to expect. We have been anticipating Arctic air becoming a much bigger part of our pattern, especially after this upcoming weekend, after the 10th. And as that Arctic air does move in, the biggest question mark is, are we going to get a connection that leads to snowstorms or is it going to be a relatively cold and dry pattern today we have taken steps into a much snowier look compared to yesterday's model runs that showed almost none of that connection occurring leading to a just colder drier pattern today i have a snowier outlook to show you so let's go over what to expect for your area as far as timing of this cold air and potential snowfall events that you need to be watching out for first off we'll start with the european model here and as we move through Today, it's super nice outside, super nice like we've been discussing again. Get outdoors and enjoy it. It's mid-60s here in Virginia. Absolutely beautiful, and we do expect 70s as we get later into this week. Uh, and as we move ahead towards tomorrow on Wednesday, we can see a still relatively dry pattern again in those milder temperatures for the central states especially, but already starting out for the eastern states. And most of our activity is going to be around the northwest where we see some snowfall and nearby the southwest we do have a storm system near there as well causing mostly rainfall for the northeast we do have a minor low pressure system there offshore of new england leading to some lighter snowfall or maybe mixed precipitation for southern new england as we keep moving forward here towards thursday the 8th we see something big occurring First off, we get a low forming over the center of the United States. This is a massive feature. Underneath it and behind it, we have a cold air mass developing that is leading to a lot of snowfall for this mountainous west area and a lot of cold air pouring in. Out ahead of this low, we have a dry warm front. We can tell by the 500 millibar heights here that we do see a warm front taking place, but again, not leading to very much precipitation yet. This is creating a warm, humid bubble underneath and ahead of this low where warm air is being funneled northward as there's a cold air mass to its west and east. There's a very intense pattern, and oftentimes we see strong winds from the south, so expect a warm humid but also quite windy and a lot of times quite cloudy conditions uh, can be expected here to the east of this low is what i would anticipate for this day on thursday we see our initial severe weather threat and thunderstorm threat with this one where right now texas and oklahoma seem to be the primary area to watch for at least a level one marginal risk which is what we have right now for severe weather on thursday the 8th Moving ahead towards Friday, though, I really don't feel like this severe weather and thunderstorm risk is going to lower. I actually think it's going to increase. This low weakens and moves northward, but we're still left over with a lot of disturbance here from Texas eastward through the deep south and even up into the Ohio Valley, where we have warmer, humid conditions set up to the east and colder, drier air that's infiltrating from the northwest trying to move in. When these two air masses blend and try to combine we get a lot of instability in between which is what we're seeing here so i think the severe weather and thunderstorm threat is going to be pretty interesting across the deep south here for friday on the 9th for the eastern seaboard this is likely to be the warmest day of the week where we're looking at 70s even 80s for further areas in the south and then mid 60s generally further northward this is highly above normal compared to what is typical for this time of year Saturday for a lot of the day is going to be quite similar. We actually have a low pressure system that kind of takes over where the last one left off. Cold front here swinging to the south, warm front out ahead, and we're still getting mild air pushing up the east coast for midday on Saturday the 10th. Interestingly, we've seen a couple of things change. First off, our colder air is now more centered over the central states, pouring in with Arctic air, leading to snowfall across a lot of the Midwest and Great Lakes here. And we have a high pressure warmer pattern setting up for the west which is really what is causing this colder air to move further and further eastward with time with all that being said we continue to see thunderstorms and severe weather here across areas like alabama georgia south carolina tennessee kentucky virginia uh, into west virginia as well i think the thunderstorms are going to be an inherent chance basically from the mid-atlantic southward here obviously the highest chance likely being here for alabama georgia and south carolina but this is a little bit far out for severe weather so we'll have to get the fine details a little bit later on overnight saturday into sunday is when that cold front fully passes through where you could hear a crack of thunder or heavy rain overnight 
Saturday into Sunday. And finally, by Sunday the 11th, we are left with an overall warmer pattern out west and a much colder pattern in the east here. Strong low up here to the north in Canada. This is leading to some snow showers, even being enhanced by lake effect here over the Great Lakes. As we keep going towards Monday the 12th, we can see a still ridge in the west trough in the east pattern, and that kind of just stays that way. Here's Wednesday the 14th. We get another upper level low here over Michigan, leading to some general snow showers nearby the Great Lakes. And as time goes on, we can see we get this vertical look on the jet stream multiple times here that we've been discussing for over a week now, uh, where this takes a sudden turn up the east coast and almost directly moves up it or alongside it. Some low pressure is present in this area, but it's not really coming together like it could. And if it did, we would be looking at big time snow threats during this time frame for some of these areas. We do see it start to come together here for the 15th into the 16th, right around the 10 day mark. So still take it with a grain of salt, uh, but it's just a little bit too late. As you can see, a lot of this cold air is pushed further off the coast and this low is not close enough to the coast to bring any substantial precipitation along the coastal areas. Now, at 10 days out, this can certainly change a lot. The bigger picture is that we do have a vertical jet stream up the East Coast, plenty of cold air, and we get this low pressure system developing along it, which is kind of your three major ingredients. So we just have to see how it plays out. Will it be offshore like this in a non-event, or will this actually evolve into something quite major? I think both are on the table at this point for this time frame. We just have so much time to go. We do get a little bit of a milder push or a little break in things here on this particular model run. Still, the west is warm, which is what's going to keep the cold air moving into the east, whether it takes a break or not. We get this little bit of a milder push. It's still probably very close to normal for most areas in the east, but this happens briefly before more Arctic air moves in very rapidly. Meanwhile, timing almost perfectly, we see this southern stream of moisture really, really ramping up the southeast coast here, trying to develop a low somewhere near coastal South Carolina or some of the surrounding states. If this could be timed perfectly, this could be another massive snowfall threat. But as you can see, it's just a little too late with this as the cold air is moving in. But that is clearly another storm signal right along that jet stream that could amount to something a lot more major. And right at the, the tail end of our model run, it's very apparent that we do have cold air still streamlining towards the eastern states. A little bit of high pressure trying to establish itself over the southeast, which is a bit of a concern. But we do see a storm kind of coming together here between these two air masses, which would likely take a track somewhere in here, possibly posing a threat for these areas if this became a solid storm signal much later on, because this is very far out at this point. Let's kind of cross-reference this with the GFS model, see what this one's showing, and this one's going to be actually colder and snowier. So obviously the European model didn't really show anything coming together, but we saw the key dates to watch for where things can easily change. Um, it's to the point where a lot of those near, near misses that we saw are just as likely to do what the model just showed as they are to be a major snowstorm. It's kind of a, a coin flip with that because we're so, so close to seeing it come together there uh, that it's not really a greater chance in either direction. As we get past our very warm phase this weekend, we see that colder air move in. A little bit more brief on that first entry here on the GFS model. We actually get a little bit of a milder push as soon as Monday, Tuesday there, 12th, 13th. But this quickly recycles into a much more major Arctic pattern where this is diving, diving southward and even has a little bit of an eastern turn to it. Meanwhile, we get this southern jet underneath that's moving through into the deep south. And if this can get latched along that jet stream, the northern jet, we're going to see big things occur. And on this model, we actually do see pretty big things occur here. As that low around the 14th, 15th, instead of being way too far offshore, we get this thing along the east coast and we deal with an interior eastern major, major snow system for the Appalachian Mountain Range and even some areas east of there in the mid-Atlantic and northeast here, Thursday the 15th here. And throughout Thursday and Friday, that really, really leads to a lot of snowfall for, again, the mid-Atlantic and northeast and even some of the southeast areas. After this point, we do just kind of stay really cold. We get this kind of transient snowfall event, which what that basically means is that instead of like this area here, right, on our previous storm that we just watched, this would be moving kind of along the jet stream and that snowfall would stay over the same areas, uh, the line kind of moving along the jet stream. Transient is where it's kind of just sweeping through. So you're only getting a thin little band of snowfall because it's not getting that kind of training effect. It's just sweeping through. So you get a more brief kind of snow shower or snow squall event there. 
uh, on this example. That does try to form into a low offshore of the East Coast, but much like what we saw in the European model, it's too far offshore, a little too little too late. But we really just stay cold here. I mean, nothing really changes. We keep the, some of this warmth and high pressure out west, which is going to continue to kind of steer the cold air towards the east. If we can get locked into something like this, I think that we're looking at prolonged periods of mostly cold air. And on this model, we even see another storm system organizing itself at the very tail end of the run, where if this moves along the jet stream, this could be a pretty big threat, not only for these areas in the Midwest and Ohio Valley, but also the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast eventually could be seeing a system like this if we find ourselves in a pattern such as the one presented here by the GFS model. Now the total precipitation, well, actually, <laughs> I kind of got a little ahead of myself there. The temperatures on the European model, again, are cold, a little milder than the GFS model. And here's your just insane wave of warm air that we're seeing, very reminiscent of the one we saw around Christmas time. Uh, we see, again, primarily, like we said yesterday, Wednesday and Thursday being the warmest period here for the central states, where the dark reds and brown, brownish grays is where we're talking about 15 to 25 or more degrees above what is normal for this time of year, which is just massive. And this lasts a couple of days. We see Thursday, it's still over more of the center of the nation. And then mostly for Friday here on the 9th, we see it move more easterly, Ohio Valley, mid-Atlantic, southeast areas, mostly seeing most of the warmth. And then Saturday... It's even more oriented over the east. Uh, but then by Sunday the 11th, it's beginning to basically move out and we get this colder air mass moving in. That one's a little less intense. We do get that warmer air in between, but then we get a more substantial cool down around the 15th, 16th, and then an even more substantial one towards the 18th, 19th, 20th, and beyond where we're even getting another push of this Arctic air into the east. So we're kind of de descending. We're getting cold air entering the pattern around the 10th, 11th, but... As we get beyond that point, it's just getting more and more and more intense. And that is going to just lead to more snowfall chances if we see it play out this way. The GFS model, again, a little bit more intense in this instance. We see this Arctic air move in uh, initially on the 11th and 12th. Again, this is even less significant than the European model showed. And then we get this really intense push for the 15th, 16th, 17th, where we do get that East Coast snowstorm. And then it gets even worse as time goes on, really never taking a break. We have this, this Arctic air set up around the 22nd, but clearly more of it is on the way in as well. So no end in sight here from both of these models. Now for the total precipitation here, we do see really elevated amounts for the deep south and maybe throughout the southeast. That's the most elevated compared to normal. But this is pretty standard, a little bit below average in the southwest we could tell that a lot of our storms are streaking along the jet stream, whether it's when it's further towards the north central states where we get it moving along the jet stream inland, or we get them moving through kind of the southeast here as that jet stream ends up further and further eastward with time. That is your overall pattern. We also have a lot of storm systems moving through the west and diving southward. So this is your general flow here that we're seeing pretty consistently. Now, the European model is active for the Sierra, uh, not the Sierra Nevada, actually, the Cascades and the Rockies, but not the Sierra Nevada. And then we actually do see a huge uptick for a lot of the northern plains, upper Midwest, Great Lakes, and then into the interior northeast with a pretty big lack still for a lot of these mid-Atlantic and southern New England areas. The GFS model does clear up some of that where we get actually a lot more substantial snowfall throughout areas in the mid-Atlantic and northeast. So a little bit of a differing opinion. Then in the northern plains and upper Midwest getting a whole lot less than the European model showed. So still some disagreement on the specific details, which is to be expected. This is why I tell you guys the specific details are not nearly as important as the overall pattern like temperature, jet stream, and times and areas of storm formation. Those are the details that the models can nail in the long range. But as far as is the mid-Atlantic and northeast going to see a snowstorm, yes or no, they can't really nail that that far out. We have to look within 10 days and in most cases within seven days to get confirmed, uh, you know, high, high, high chances of specific snowstorms for a specific area. With all that stuff being said, be sure to subscribe because we upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.